Well, here we are one more time, and uh, today we're going to be filling some holes. So it's been a little while, and uh, I'm sure that that's given you plenty of time that you have started your project and uh, well underway to creating your own little masterpiece, whether it's a teardrop trailer or just a little uh, storage trailer or full-blown travel trailer. So today I'll show you what we're going to be doing. Since I went around and attached facing on all of my uh, cabinetry on the bench seats and uh, wall units and wardrobes, um, we attach those glue and staple. So now we have a bunch of staple holes that we have to fill. So today's video is probably not the most glamorous but it is an important piece and I'll show you why. Uh, so what we're going to be using is a product called Fast and Final and it's a uh, very lightweight. It's not really a putty per se but it is a soft filler that uh, we're going to use to put in a hole. Now the reason why we use this uh, is once you put it in the holes it doesn't shrink. Uh, which is probably good when it dries. So we're going to fill our holes and uh, paint over it. So the last thing we want to do is fill our holes, get it all nice and smooth, paint it, and only find little dimples uh, after we've painted it, which uh, looks kind of tacky. So let me show you why we're going to fill it, and then we're going to get into the process of putting it in. So stay tuned. So in all of our cabinetry, and benches and wardrobes and all the little nuances we stuck in uh, as we stapled we put little holes in our plywood and so we want to make sure and fill those and then paint it and that's what we did uh, on the walls and the ceiling well partial of the ceiling and I'll show you why we're gonna fill it so if we didn't fill the holes and we went ahead and painted it I hope you can see this but up top here, you can see all the little staple holes that I just painted over. Now this is on a seam, and so there's a piece of, piece of wood that runs across here, and I attached the ceiling to it. Now the reason why I didn't fill these is because there's going to be a nice wood trim that goes across and covers that. So I would just be adding uh, unnecessary time by filling those holes. But that is why we want to take the extra mile and fill those holes so we don't end up with all these ugly little, uh, ugly little holes after you paint it, which will definitely show up. And I don't care if you sit there and dab your brush in it and try to fill the hole with paint. When the paint dries, you are going to have dimples everywhere. So that is what we're going to be doing today so we have the face of our cabinetry we also have the bottom and uh, i didn't get too carried away as far as the staple gun goes uh, machine gunning it putting a thousand bullet holes in it so it should go fairly quick and when it, once it's done then we can go ahead and continue our paint so with that i'll show you what we are going to use for paint once all of our holes are filled and uh, we've got everything masked off so we can protect what we've already painted because we're going to use a different color. So my walls, I chose a uh, color, it's called Fog Gray, which is this color here on the color card. Now obviously whenever you choose your color cards, color cards are always just a little bit darker than after you paint it. So. If you want something a little darker, always go a little darker on your color cards so when it, when it dries, it probably will most likely match the shade that you're looking for. But it's not an exact match. The walls are just a little bit lighter than the card that I chose. But I was pleased with the color. So, as a contrast, what I'm going to use on the sides of the cabinets, the face, the benches, is what's called Blackberry Farm. And it's, uh, it's sort of like a grayish blue, and it'll be this color here. 
knowing that it will be a little bit lighter as it comes out. So that will be the contrast that we'll see on the cabinetry, which I think is gonna, gonna be pretty nice. Um, that'll set the cabinets apart. And then once the cabinet facings are on, I think I will most likely leave those as a wood and stain and varnish the wood. So at least we got some warmth throughout the cabin. So that's what it's gonna look like. And I think, uh, I think it's pretty cool. My neighbors, and I should have brought the pillows out, my neighbors have watched the progress of me building this thing. And they, uh, they blessed me with a couple of pillows that uh, my friend's wife had made. And they are very colorful. They have the color of the walls. They've got basically the color that I'm gonna paint all the cabinets with. And so it's gonna be a perfect match in here. And I think it's gonna be great. So our tools for today are really simple. A spatula. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of that out, put it on the lid, scrape a little bit, and we'll just make sure and put it in all the holes. Like I say, it should go pretty quick. And uh, when we do this, you want to take a section at a time. Don't try to do all the face here and then walk over here and do this and, and then come over here and dab a little bit here. Start at one end of, of uh, an area and work left or right or up and down or in and out, however you want to do it. And make sure you get all the holes filled uh, on one side or the other and then come back and, and do the bottom or top or face or whatever you're working on. That way you'll make sure and cover all the holes. If I started here and did a little bit here and then, oh, I got one over here and I fill that, oh, I got some here, fill this. Pretty soon I don't know what I've got left to do. So to keep it uniform, we're going to start on one side, work to the other, and then we're going to start on one side and work to the other. So when we get to the end, it will be totally done. So wherever you start, that's what you want to finish with. So always start and finish your area before you move to the next area. That's probably the best tip I can give you on that. That way you don't get lost and after you paint it then you realize you forgot some areas and what a drag that is because then you have to go back and fill it and paint it and, and it's uh, kind of discouraging. So that's uh, how we're going to do it. So I'll probably set up my camera. Like I said, it's going to be boring sitting here watching me fill these things but I got a I got a few things I can talk about as I'm filling these holes and then we'll rush through the video and I still have to go down and purchase the paint so I didn't buy the paint first because I didn't know how long it's going to take or when I would get back to my project so I just didn't want it sitting on the floor um, waiting for me to use it so when I get done filling all the holes boom we'll get the paint get everything masked off and begin painting and I'm hoping to have uh, hoping to have it done this weekend okay that's what we're going to do stay tuned okay now this isn't necessary but I'm going to use a little board and I'm going to take a little bit of my my putty that I'm going to use and uh, I'm going to put a little bit on the board and that's what I'm going to work from a little bit will go a long way so we'll take a little bit we could work out of the container but then uh, as you're working it's going to be drying out so we keep the container closed put just what we need on our board and then we can work from our board and uh, it's easier to put a little bit more on here than it is to go down to the store and buy new stuff because you left the lid off and it all dried out that's happened it's a bummer okay let me zoom in and show you uh, how easy it is to fill these holes so just for uh, demonstration purposes because like I said I'm gonna start from one side and work to the other but you can't see me too well in the corner so we're just gonna take our board and uh, we're gonna just take a little bit of our putty just a little bit on our stick and we're just gonna smear it on here and 
and that's it. And it fills those holes real nice and flush. And that's all there is to it. So it shouldn't take too long. And when we're done, I'll give you a shot of what it looks like. Um, nice little white dimples everywhere. So let me get this going and uh, hopefully we get some paint on this thing today. Stay tuned. So as you are filling your holes, um, stuff will dry and your blade on your spatula will get caked with a, with your spackling. So we'll scrape off our board a little bit. And then we just take a regular old razor blade and we'll take our spatula, set it down on a piece of wood, just kind of scrape off the dried spat spackling. Good as new. And we're ready to continue. Let me show you what I've got done so far. And uh, it hasn't taken very long. I figure the whole process will take about 45 minutes. <sighs> and it is kind of boring, but like I said, it is something that uh, you're going to want to do to make it look pretty nice. Let me give you a shot of what I got. Okay, as you can see, I've got uh, my holes filled. And all along the face and also along the bottom and I've got the face of this cabinet finished I don't have the bottom done yet and I have this one done so one of the things I forgot to mention when uh, when you go to fill your holes you definitely want to have one of those handy because <laughs> uh, as you're stapling your face on sometimes it doesn't push the staple all the way in and you want to tap those in um, as you go along that way you can fill the holes if not you'll have a staple sticking out you'll paint over it and it'll be a an ugly little shiny bump sticking out there uh, when you're done. So I still have the side of this one to do and I finished the face and I've also finished this side of the of the wardrobe. Okay so back to work get uh, get going. So when you're ready to start painting basically all you have to do is your hand will act like sandpaper. You just go along and smooth off any chunks that got left on there that sort of dried and they just fall right off and the holes are nice and filled. Okay, well with that we'll continue on. Okay, we finished uh, filling all the bullet holes and so uh, now my next project is to mask off around the cabinetry and all the benches and go down to the store and purchase my paint and get these things painted um, and once that's finished then we can start making the cabinet doors which uh, will surely change the way the thing looks in here so with all that um, coming along still slowly but surely and, um, oh yeah I want to say thanks to those who uh, who subscribe to the channel and, and watching the progress and those who uh, had uh, some pretty kind words on their comments uh, that's much appreciated and I hope everybody continues watching because there's a lot to be done and uh, we're just kind of kind of winging it as we go at this point uh, the biggest design was just uh, figuring out what size and shape I wanted this thing to be. After that, uh, <laughs> we're just piecing it together uh, as we go. And that's the fun part. You just uh, It opens up a little bit of creativity and uh, you get to use what's in here and uh, put it out to where everybody can see it. And 
uh, that's a that's a good feeling. And with that said, now as I'm as I'm going along and uh, filling all these holes and stuff, some people like to listen to to music as they go along. I prefer uh, I prefer no sound at all, really, because uh, it gives me a chance to start thinking ahead the next steps that I want to do. So I've already thought how I want my cabinet doors to be and all the all the facings and whatnot. So I've got that figured out in my head and uh, the uh, the next step after that is the cushions for the benches and the, the seats and the, for the bed and stuff. Now that, <laughs> that, that was a real eye-opener. So I thought I would get on the internet and uh, check out what other people have done, Pinterest and stuff like that, and they've got some really nice nice ideas. I watched a ton of videos on how to make your own cushions and stuff, so I thought I would uh, just go down to my local upholstery shop and say, hey, I need some cushions. But then, <laughs> then I realized how much that stuff cost. I had no idea. So, just the, I would need eight, eight cushions. I got two bottoms, two sides, two bottoms, two sides on the front. And uh, if I had an upholstery shop make these things for me, uh, we're looking at, we're looking at anywhere from, you know, if you want to get real cheap, you're looking at anywhere from 600 to, to you know, if you want borders around it, zippers and all the nice fabric and stuff, you're looking up to about a thousand bucks. Now, I'm working on a budget. Not that I don't have the money I could spend on that, but I don't want to spend a thousand dollars on freaking cushions. So I've been searching the internet looking for just the foam, and uh, foam doesn't come cheap. They must uh, they must infuse it with gold or or uh, platinum or something because they sure put a high price on that foam. So. I had to swallow a little bit hard and uh, say, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to spend a little bit on just the foam." So I'm looking at probably a couple hundred dollars in just the foam, just to cover what I I want to get done. Then I'm looking at uh, how I would have to cut it. Now some people cut it with electric uh, knife, and uh, I've seen the <laughs> I've seen what the results are after somebody tries to show you how to cut it with electric knife and I don't have that much patience. Or you can opt for the foam cutter which is another 125 bucks which is uh, which is something I might do. But then that leaves me with uh, how am I going to get them covered. I thought about buying my material, borrowing or buying a sewing machine and making my own. The problem with that is not that I can't do it. Uh, it's just that's going to take a lot of time. So I've watched the videos of professionals uh, making covers for their, their cushions for boats and trailers and stuff. And they've got a lot of hours in making their cushions. So I'm more of the expedient type and I don't want to take the time to make my own covers. So probably what I will do is I'll purchase the foam at one location fairly good price. I'll purchase the uh, upholstery at another location. There's a place up in uh, by Portland, uh, RV Surplus, and there you can buy the uh, RV fabric for about five dollars a yard. That's about fifteen dollars cheaper than any of your uh, local craft stores or anything like that. And so and it's really good material. So for a hundred bucks I can get me uh, 20 yards of that and call it good, then I would have to take it to a local shop and have them make my uh, covers or find somebody who uh, is is willing to make covers and that's probably going to be another two or three hundred dollars so be expected for a trailer this size for the small cushions that I'm going to have to have at least five or six hundred dollars wrapped up in uh, cushions <laughs> I gotta tell you, um, I didn't realize that that is uh, <laughs> a 
piece of gold. Good Lord. I can go down and buy me a queen size mattress for 75 bucks. I can't buy a camper <laughs> cushion for less than 200. So anyway, that was an eye opener. But we'll get it done and uh, we'll move on to the next bigger and better things. So I just thought I'd throw that out there for you. Um, maybe you've got better connections or, or better resources. And uh, I hope you do because uh, that, that'll set you back a little bit. But uh, I'm sure that when it's all said and done, it's going to be great. So I guess my next step now is I'm just going to go ahead and clean up my area and uh, get ready to prep for some painting. I'll go down to the store and purchase my paint and probably a few brushes and maybe a roller and we'll get this thing um, underway. <sighs> yep, it's coming along. So thanks for hanging in there with me and I'll give you one more shot as I tour around and show you how we filled the bullet holes real quick. Like you really want to see that but um, <laughs> that's the biggest highlight I've got for today. So that's enough jibber jabber. I think that's the most I can talk in short period of time. So with that, stay tuned. We're going to do some painting and then we'll see what this thing looks like after that. And then we'll get some cabinet doors up and we're going to make this thing starting to look a little warm and cozy and homey. <laughs>